Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Hey, and I'm Sasha Burson. And one question we um, get asked fairly frequently from our existing clients, from our prospects, do I need to blog? Do I need to generate content? Does it work at all? How would you answer this question? A, a famous answer, it depends, right? And here's what it depends on, whether it's done right or wrong way. Well, let me explain. So why should almost any business, especially professional services, especially professional services where they know that their prospective clients are looking for them online, why should this type of businesses, entities, specifically attorneys, blog? Because Google has 200 factors that they have in their algorithm that they use to decide how high you should be placed or your website should be placed in Google, hopefully page one, and with the objective of being in the top five search results. So when someone, your prospective client, is looking for an answer to a question that you, in your practice area, should be able to answer really well and really fast, if you blog about that, and you blog about it well, and I'll explain what that means in a moment, then with all the effort that you put into that blogging, they should be able to find you in the top five under a number of different search queries. And search query just means whatever it is that they're asking. Now, here's how to make it work, and most people do not know how to make it work, so I think this is a really important video. To make it work really well is you need to know how Google assesses quality of the content on your website. So there are a number of factors that go into that assessment. One of them is how comprehensive is your content? Meaning, from millions of blog posts analyzed, we know that Google gives preference to blog posts that are close to 2,000 words in length because they see it as a more comprehensive content that answers the question more thoroughly. And Google likes it when questions are answered more thoroughly. That means that content has higher quality and because it has higher quality, Google gives it higher authority. Now, can you just write 2000 words of BS? You can, however, Google knows that it's BS and the way that they know it, if people on average are going to spend 30 seconds interacting with that content, Google is going to recognize that that content has very little value, right? They're just scanning through it, see that it's BS, and they bounce out of there. Now, high quality content, on the other hand, is going to keep them on the page for a while longer because they're going to consume the answer because that answer is relevant to them. Now, will one blog post do the magic and get you the traffic or the number of visitors that you need? Highly likely the answer to that question is a no, unless you're the only one in the world who answered that question, right? And no one else is ranking for that. So whenever someone searches for an answer to that question, they only find you. Because there are so many competitors that write about similar subjects, the way to win in this game, in this blogging game, is to think about your blog in terms of topic clusters. Let me explain what that means. So for legal marketers out there, whether you do it yourself or you hire a firm to do this, topic clusters means the following. So you think about the main subject, the main thing that your prospects ask you about, and you can write a very comprehensive blog post about that post, right? So that post can be 2,000 words, 3,000 words, 5,000 words. Don't go crazy and write like a 10,000 word blog post because that might be an overkill and will take a lot longer. By the way, for those of you that, that uh, are um, more analytical, think about it this way. A typical book page contains 200 to 300, 250 to 300 words. So when you write a 10,000 word blog post, that is an equivalent to 40 on the high end, to maybe 34 on the low end pages in the book. So don't go crazy. 2,000 words to 3,000 words is usually more than enough. You don't have to go above that. So, when you write topic clusters, you start with the main post, right? This is the main topic that a lot of people ask you about. 
Now, in that main topic, when you think about conversations that you have with your prospects, you can deviate from the main topic and talk about subjects that go off a tangent. They're still relevant to this topic. They're not exactly this topic, right? So you can now write a number of blog posts that become a cluster around the main topic. And what you will do is you will cross-link, and I'll explain what that means in a moment. You will cross-link different blog posts between each other and all of them will point to the main topic blog post. What that does is it shows Google that you know the subject comprehensively and you answer a question comprehensively through a number of different of pieces of content and what because they, and Google will know it because they will see all those cross links between different blog posts and they will see that when people consume the main subject or mm -hmm. one of the cluster subjects is that they're clicking on the links to get more information. This points to Google that your content has a lot more authority than other attorneys' content because most people are only focused on like writing this one thing about this one thing. Whereas in a conversation, they can go off a tangent in 12 different directions, right? So always think about when you write a piece of content, like what's the main subject and what else can I talk about regarding the subject? And by the way, how do you gather ideas for this? When you're meeting with a prospective client or having a phone call with them, think about the main questions that they ask you, write them down, and think about all the subjects that you cover that are relevant to each one of those questions. And this is how you organize ideas before you start writing. That's a really powerful tool. By the way, if you start recording your conversations that you're having with your clients, you will have a million ideas for content, and there's a huge shortcut that you can create. You can record videos just like we do, talking about this subject, and then you can transcribe them. That will be a huge shortcut, and then you can rewrite the transcript or hire a ghostwriter that's going to rewrite it for you. For a cost of a couple hundred bucks a month, maybe 150 bucks a month, someone very proficient is going to rewrite it and create beautiful blog posts. That will like seriously, seriously save you a lot of time and effort creating this stuff. But Sasha, some attorneys would say, why do I need to give away all this information? Uh, I don't want to give we it away. We had that conversation yesterday. Yes. Because the answer is really simple. So if you give away all this, by the way, obviously you're an attorney, you know that you need to have a disclaimer that whatever content you post is not legal advice, right? It doesn't cost you legal advice. It's just some information that you're sharing. So the reason why you want to give away as much information as possible, because your clients are not technicians. They want to know what you do and that you understand how to do it, but they don't need to know how you do it, right? You can talk about what all day long, but you don't need to talk about how. Should you choose to talk about how you do your business, how you provide legal services, that's fine. Just know that the people who are going to read that content are other technicians, AKA, attorneys, right? They will look for explanation how you practice law. Now, you may think that it's a bad idea to do that, but I beg the different. And here's why. It doesn't matter to Google who visits your website, your, who reads your blogs. The reason why it doesn't matter is because it cannot differentiate whether it's attorney consuming content or whether it's a prospective client consuming content. What Google cares about is that there is traffic coming to your website and that that traffic finds your content relevant. And interestingly enough, technicians are going to interact with your content more in terms of amount of time that they spend with your content than non-technicians, your prospective clients. And the more time Google, or as Google sees that people are spending more and more time on your blog, they will give your blog more and more authority. So don't worry about giving away too much information. Give away as much as possible because those that want to hire you don't care to know how to do it. And those that will never hire you will give you that SEO juice, right? They will show Google that you're more relevant than them because you're producing content and all they do is consume content. So fire away, record, transcribe, republish, Blast it all over the internet. Do whatever it is that you need to show Google that you're highly relevant. And that's what Google loves and that's what Google needs to give your website a lot more authority. So when more people look for you, 
or that more, when more people look for your services, they actually find you instead of your competitors. And when we say blogging, it doesn't necessarily need to be an actual blog post under a blog section. Obviously, if your website doesn't have enough content or make sure that all of your practice areas has separate pages yes. and a lot of content describing what exactly you do, examples of your uh, previous wins and Absolutely. as much information as possible. And only after this area is done, then you can move to the blogging. Yeah, amen to that. Gotta do it. That's, that's a starting point for your website to be high performance. You have to have all of those things. Blog is there to give it a lot more firepower than it would have otherwise. Or, and when I say firepower, I mean in terms of attracting more traffic and from that traffic picking and choosing the clients that you want to work with and if you do end up recording videos just make sure to link them on your blog post because google loves it yep absolutely all right all thanks right, so that's a wrap thanks for watching bye